What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a recap on my Clear Lake event. We're gonna go through practice into the tournament and then talk about what I think I should have done differently to have a better event. Only finished in 60th, so I have a lot of room to improve. So we're gonna go through it, talk about it, try to figure out where we went wrong and how we could have done better. I think that these were entertaining videos even though I didn't have the tournament I wanted. Um, had some boat problems on day one of the tournament and then ended up scrounging out a 14 pound limit on day two. Tough day one, okay day two. If I would have had two okay days, we would have been fishing on day three out there and had a dramatically better tournament. So let's get into it. And don't forget guys, all these MLF events, the Toyota series, everything is being brought to you guys by GCI Outdoor, Six Sense Fishing, Waterland Fishing Optics, and Duet Walls. Without their support, I wouldn't be going out to fish these events and I wouldn't be able to make this type of content for you guys. You guys are getting everything from these events, every day of practice, these recap videos, the tournament days themselves, you're seeing everything unfold basically in real time, you're seeing what's working, seeing what's not working, talking about it after the fact. So if you guys go to any of these lakes or experiencing anything similar in your fishing, in your tournaments, you can take this content and really apply it to what you're doing. So I really hope it's helpful, but please support those companies that are really what make, they're really what's making it possible for me to put this stuff out for you guys. So when I traveled up to Clear Lake, I ended up getting there, I believe on Saturday, around midday, mid-afternoon, something like that. Decided to put my boat on the water and go fishing for a little bit. So I'm fishing in Rattlesnake, and anybody familiar with, with Rattlesnake, um, there's a lot of things that you can hit with your boat, and I managed to hit something with my boat. I also got a hook in my hand during that couple hours I was out on the water. I ended up taking a chunk out of my skeg and also uh, dinging up my prop a little bit while also getting a hook through my finger. I had to literally push it through and then cut the hook and thankfully, the point was sticking out of my finger already, so I didn't have to push it as much through my finger, but still had to push that hook all the way through my finger to get the bar about the other side, and then cut it off, and everything was okay. Then after that is when I ended up hitting the rock pile with my lower unit. Thankfully, I was able to get through the tournament, and nothing was really badly damaged. Once I got home, I was able to get everything fixed, and there wasn't any damage or anything like that, other than basically the cosmetic stuff that happened on the skeg and on the uh, and on the propeller. So nothing major, was thankful for that, had to get it fixed, did cost a little bit of money, but we ended up getting it fixed. So the following day was my first official day out there on the water, and things did not start off easy. I was throwing a wacky worm around, I was kind of finessing some fish, um, ended up getting on a little bit of a wacky rig bite, but it was just wasn't very consistent. I caught a drop shot fish as well, it was very scattered, couldn't really narrow anything down and I felt like I was already knowing like hey this isn't what I expected the lake wasn't setting up the way I was expecting um, Clear Lake's got a lot of flats and stuff like that and that's not something that I was expecting and that's my fault I should have been on a map looking at the contour lines getting a better idea of what I was gonna be dealing with out there so I did show up to Clear Lake pretty unprepared I should have done a lot more research and I would have had a lot more of an idea of what I was getting into going up to Clear Lake so day two, I had a little bit more knowledge, obviously, of what was going on. Uh, day two wasn't super easy as well. I uh, fished a different part of the lake. The first day I was out there, I fished the northern part of the lake. Second day, I fished the southern part of the lake. Ended up, again, drop shotting some fish, got a crankbait fish, but just things were very spotty. They weren't consistent. I couldn't just go and do anything specific. I couldn't fish offshore the way I was wanting to. The docks just really weren't playing a big factor for me, but ended up catching some fish that day, so I knew I could at least catch some fish out there. I was getting a few bites, but things were just super tough for me. I just really wasn't feeling like I was getting on anything. I wasn't building upon anything. So day three came along and I went back up north because everybody was telling me that if you want to do well in this tournament, you need to find some fish up north in that grass. That's where the bigger fish are right now and I focused on that. I really tried hard to find some of those fish. Day three, I ended up catching some square bill fish, caught some jerk bait fish, caught some swim bait fish, and then later on in the afternoon, uh, the cameras were off and stuff like that. I didn't have them running because the batteries had died. It was like 6.30 at night. I ended up catching three jerk bait fish on one of these big flats, and I wish I would have known that that was a better deal than what it was. It kind of just felt like a little flurry that I that I had found, but it was actually, a much more realistic bite and I probably could have ran that bite in a lot more areas I just didn't know that and obviously if I 
knew Clear Lake better, I would have been able to realize that, hey, these are pre-spawn fish that are setting up on these outside grass patches on these big flats getting ready to spawn. I mean, I'm talking 200 to 300 yards offshore sometimes in basically five to seven foot of water. It was still shallow water, but it was way offshore. Scattered grass, clean grass, because there was a lot of like nasty, like mossy stuff on some of the shallower grass. And then when you got a little bit further offshore in that little bit deeper grass, the grass really cleaned up and that's where more of the fish were. There were some fish up shallow, obviously, but where that cleaner grass was, was a better quality fish and more consistent fishing. So my fourth day of practice came along and I was really trying to expand upon what I had found on day three, but it just didn't happen. Um, I was running around trying to find different areas to fish, just really couldn't find anything. I literally did not catch a bass that day. I only caught one crappie and uh, that's not really telling me a whole lot about what I need to be doing in the tournament. So even though I caught some fish in practice, I really didn't feel like I had a great game plan. I didn't really feel like I had a really good bite going into the tournament, but I was just gonna do what I could and hopefully get on those jerkbait fish that I found in practice because that's really what I was relying upon. But unfortunately, when the tournament rolled around, the weather was horrible. So day one of the tournament, I got up and literally the wind was howling in the area that we were staying. We were staying a little bit mid-lake, I would call it, and um, it was just howling. We got down to Redbud where we were launching at. The wind was not nearly as bad, but on the northern part of the lake, the wind was horrible. But all I had were those fish on the northern end of the lake, so I was gonna try to get there because th that's where I had fish. I thought it would be wind protected in that area, and once we eventually got there, it actually was fairly fishable and the, the wind was somewhat protected in that area and it wasn't too bad, but just getting there was a disaster. I ended up breaking the trolling motor bracket on my boat and then I also had the trolling motor post, the little bump stop that usually is like hitting on the front deck of your boat to keep your trolling motor from collapsing on itself or anything like that, literally went through my front deck. There was a literal hole through the carpet and through the front deck of my boat. I literally didn't know that it had happened until my co-angler was like, hey, I think your trolling motor is broken as we're driving down the lake. Ended up having to pull into this bay, check it out. I literally had to put duct tape over my gunnel because I needed to protect the fiberglass from the trolling motor because the trolling motor bracket where the elbow is where it lifts and, and stows was literally broken so it, it would collapse and it would start hitting on the gunnel of my boat and it actually did a little bit of damage to the fiberglass, nothing dramatic but nevertheless there was some damage there so I covered everything up with duct tape in order to prevent it from doing any further damage than it had already done and this was literally within like the first couple hours of the tournament. No, this was literally like within the first 30 minutes of the tournament is when I was dealing with all of this and um, it really messed me up for that entire day really and especially the first half of that day. So I really tried to get to my fish on day one, but by the time I did end up getting there, it just, it wasn't going on. I wasn't mentally focused. I ended up catching a jerkbait fish and lost it as was coming back to the boat, which was super unfortunate because I only ended up weighing three fish, so I really needed that one jerkbait fish from the area that I had found him in practice. Uh, eventually abandoned all that and started running back down south and then started fishing some of the smaller wind protected spawning bays and i'm talking small i would just look at my my graph and find the different areas on the map that i could see look like spawning areas and then i would fish the outsides of them and then in the actual spawning bay itself and we started getting some bites um i wish i would have started doing that earlier but i only had time to catch three of those three of those fish i got three fish in the boat and i lost another so those two fish that i lost were huge issues for me in the tournament if i would have had those fish one of them was a clear four pounder i saw it come up and I lost it as it was coming up to jump. The hook just came out. It was clearly a four pounder. And then most of the fish you catch at Clear Lake are average, at least a two pounder. So I'm estimating that that one fish would have been, you know, two pounds. So I had six with the three that I ended up weighing in. Then I have a four pounder that puts me at 10 pounds. And then that, the two pounder puts me at 12 pounds. That's not a weight that you want to have at Clear Lake, but it definitely would have kept me in the, in the hunt and it would dramatically improve my overall finish in the event. That wouldn't have put me in the top 25 of fish day three, but nevertheless, it would have, at least pride points would have helped me out. So what really hurt me on day one is the fact that I 
decided to try to go through the bad weather, to try to go through all that wind and waves and everything like that, end up spearing waves that day as well. And what hurt me was the fact that I didn't just try to salvage the day and just kind of fish around those spawning pockets that I think a lot of other people did. I think if I would have done that all day long, I think coming in with 15 pounds would have been pretty reasonable. The fish were biting well enough that I think I could have at least gotten those 15 pounds, but I tried to get to the fish that I had and that really hurt me in the long run. I really think if I would just buckle down and just kind of junk fished in the areas that I ended up fishing on the second half of that day, I would have definitely kept myself in the hunt, had a limit, and probably had somewhere in that 15 pounds. So then going into day two, I knew I had to do some things differently, but we were gonna have some better weather. I knew I needed a big bag in order to make up some ground, so I was once again gonna go to those jerkbait fish that I have, hoping that I could get there earlier in the morning since we were having better weather, and try to catch some of those fish. So I get over to that area and it's not happening for me. So then I go to another area that's similar to it, and I ended up losing three fish in that one area. I had one on an underspin, I'm fishing it, and I get the bite, and the fish just comes up to the top of the surface, that underspin comes out and I lose it. That was probably a four pound fish when I saw it. Um, I had another one on a weightless worm. I'm casting it out there. I go to set the hook and the hook just doesn't get in the fish's mouth. And then there's another time, which I don't have on camera, and I'm retying something, so I just throw that, that weightless, weightless worm out um, and just let it sit there. I end up getting bit while I'm just sitting there retying and I go to fight the fish and it totally just beats me up. Um, I can't do anything with this fish, it's pull and drag and it ends up just sitting on the bottom. And I'm trying to just lift up on my rod just a little bit to get the fish to move so it gets out of that grass or whatever it was in and it doesn't move and I just kind of pull up on it a little bit and then my line breaks and obviously lose that fish. So that's three fish in that one area where there are some quality fish. I know that from people that I saw fishing there people that did well in the tournament were fishing there, and unfortunately, I didn't get any of those fish in the boat, and obviously that's gonna hurt you on a tournament day if you're not getting bites into the boat. So I had to abandon that whole, that whole game plan and just start fishing once again. I literally had zero fish in the boat at 12.30 on day two. I go up to this rock pile that I had found on, I believe, day one of practice. Um, I'm throwing that wacky worm like I talked about, and I get a bite. So I go there on day two of the tournament, and I'm throwing that weightless worm around again, and I literally catch five fish within an hour and I have a limit, thankfully. Um, I just kind of milked that area as best I could and probably left some fish biting, but I didn't feel like I could get a big bite there. So I went to an area on day one where my co had caught around a five pound fish. I was trying to get my co-angler limit. He was sitting on four fish and I had my limit. I had a small limit, probably around 12 pounds. So I go into this area where my co had ended up catching a five pounder the day before and we're fishing around and my co-angler spots a bed fish. So since he saw it, I'm gonna let him catch it. I try to position him in a way so he can catch that fish. He ends up catching it, he gets his limit, and then we're kind of just fishing around a little bit more. And we come up onto this little area, and I just see visually this fish, and I pitch a little jika rig over there, and I just get bit. It doesn't eat it all the way, but I got bit. So I throw something else out there. I throw a drop shot over to that fish once I see it, and the fish just literally swims over there and eats it. And I get that fish in the boat, and I'm able to call up to my 14 pound limit. So unfortunately guys, that 14 pound limit would have kept me in the hunt had I had a better day on day one. That 14 pounds definitely kept me in the chance of fishing on day three because the top 25 were eligible to fish on day three. But day one is what killed me. So I ended up junk fishing essentially on day two and ended up catching that 14 pounds. If I would have been able to do that on day one, which is what I should have done, in hindsight, after doing what I did the second half of day one and catching some of those fish, if I would have done that on day one the whole day and just kind of salvaged it, realized that you're not going to be able to get to those fish because of the weather and just stayed closer, fished in those little smaller spawning pockets where there was a little bit more wind protection, I definitely think I could have had a much more successful tournament, had a limit on day one for sure, and then possibly been able to fish on day three. But decision making was what this all comes down to, and I didn't make a good decision on day one. That's just purely what it boils down to is decision making. Yes, I had some fish up there, but sometimes the conditions are telling you to do something else or making you do something else. And unfortunately, I tried to force things to happen, ended up breaking stuff on my boat, ended up not catching the fish once I did get there, having to scramble, and then ultimately not even having a limit on day one. And then day two, I was able to get there, fish what I wanted to fish, still didn't end up happening, and then had a scramble, ended up coming in with 14 pounds. 
All said and done, ended up in 60th place in the tournament. This tournament was funky. The fishing wasn't very good in terms of Clear Lake standards, but there were fish to catch for sure. There was a lot of limits caught. There were some big fish caught. I don't think that, I don't remember hearing any giants that were caught. Um, these fish weren't 100% on the spawn yet, but there were fish definitely moving up. Day two, it really felt like there was a push of those fish coming up shallower. So I think we basically missed the tournament missed really good fishing by probably about a week unfortunately but guys i really encourage you to support gci outdoor six sense fishing waterland fishing optics and dual molds they are literally what's making it possible for me to be out there fishing these events and then bring this content to you guys without their support these tournaments wouldn't be happening this content wouldn't be happening and i wouldn't be able to try to help you as best i can through my struggles, through my trials, tribulations, and successes in order to help you catch more fish, especially if you're going into these lakes that I'm fishing. I'm giving you everything that I have on these lakes through these videos. So please support those companies. They are really what's making this content possible. Guys, we got the Delta coming up here very fast. We got a couple more videos before the Delta content starts rolling your way. So I'm excited to get up there. I'm excited to fish the Delta, fish that grass, fish those tides, and try to catch some of those big, big bass that the Delta has to offer. So I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.